very blunt statement, but I honestly think they don't want law enforcement to function properly because then they'll be caught out with all the wrongdoing that they're busy with. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Joe Emilio Show. I'm your host, Joe Emilio. All right, so for those of you who don't know, the implementation of Section 36D of the Criminal Law Forensics Procedure Act is going ahead. The government has gazetted it on the 13th of January 2022 and will take effect from 31 January 2022. Here to talk more about this and to give us a little bit more information is Ian Cameron from Action Society. Ian Cameron, uh, thank you so much for joining me on the show. So I believe Action Society uh, SA has had a big win uh, over the past uh, few weeks, I believe the uh, Forensics Procedure Act has officially been signed in. Ian, what is the Forensics Procedures Act and why is it important? So this specific act uh, or this part of the act that's uh, that's been signed and that is going to be implemented uh, is specifically Section 36D of uh, the Criminal Law Forensics Procedure Act. Uh, I think the, the, the crucial thing to... to make it very you know just to, to make it very uh, understandable or clear is that this basically means it will be compulsory for any arrestee involved in a schedule eight offense something like murder rape uh, assault uh, uh, grievous bodily harm uh, any any serious violent crime uh, it would mean that they then must it will be mandatory for them to have a dna sample taken so uh, basically, Joe, it, it gives us a, a, a lot of hope in terms of linking them to cold cases uh, and, and so on. It's important to remember that just a few years ago, the South African government uh, freed about 97,000 Schedule 8 offenders without having had uh, them do DNA samples, which is very worrying because in many cases they would probably be linked to crimes again. It sounds very pessimistic, but unfortunately, the chances are quite good that many of them would get involved in violent crime again. And therefore, it basically means we need to start from scratch. So this is a step in the right direction. How well it will be implemented is another discussion. Well, that's actually what I wanted to ask you about. You know, how efficient is this going to be? Because we're going to touch on it a bit later, but, you know, we have a DNA backlog. Last time I checked... The DNA backlog sitting at 240,000. We'll get an update on that just now. But, you know, we have this problem. We have another problem where SAPS, you know, itself, Ian, you and I have discussed this before. You know, there are good people. There are good cops in SAPS. No doubt about that. But the uh, system itself is eroding. You know, some cops saying that they have to go to macro or pick and pay to buy pens or to buy plastic uh, Ziploc bags to put evidence in, in those bags. So, you know, how efficient do you think this, this is going to be? Are you, is, action, um, is Action Society planning on, you know, keeping an eye on SAP, so to speak? Look, I'm, I'm very worried about it, to be, to be very honest. Uh, to be frank about it, I, I think we, we've got a serious challenge ahead of us uh, in terms of, of this piece of legislation. I think it's going to be a very very challenging task to make sure that it's implemented properly uh, the south african police service uh, currently don't even have the capacity to just react to small crimes uh, how on earth are they going to train enough people to do this that being said I, I guess we have to give them the benefit of the doubt and see what happens but uh, it would be a lie if i said i wasn't worried uh, the system, specifically in terms of supply chain, logistics, etc., is is very broken in the police at the moment. As you mentioned now about evidence bags, something that basic is something many uh, members of the South African Police Service don't have access to. Pens, printers, papers, etc., are all challenges that they face on a daily basis. Even something very basic like toilet paper at a police station is something many of them don't have. So, uh, I don't see it necessarily being implemented properly. Uh, I really hope it does, but I think it's going to take quite a bit longer than just the next 10 days. I can't imagine that any police station has received any form of training yet. 
uh, they would have had to if you consider the amount it's more than 140,000 cops that would need to be trained uh, and taught how exactly this process would work and I'm pretty sure that hasn't happened yet so on paper looks great implementation not so sure yet again don't want to be overly pessimistic but it's difficult uh, with the current status quo and just the way that the South African police service is being managed. Um, yeah, no, I agree. I think it's something that uh, we're going to have to keep an eye on. And, you know, I'm sure Action Society, as well as other um, civil activists, will will definitely keep an eye on it. So we'll see what happens. Um, Ian, before you go, a very important question. I wanted to know, is there any update since last year and the last time we spoke? Is there any update on the DNA backlog? Have you gotten any other information? Is it is it getting better? Are they working through it? Or has it gotten worse? So from what we've heard, uh, it's, it's just over 240,000, uh, according to my knowledge and, and what I've heard, uh, that is that is still left so it's come down by about 60,000 cases I think the question that we're busy or on our way to to asking is is to get more clarity regarding whether that amount uh, is a ring fenced amount of the 300,000 backlog or does it include the um, the actual handling of current cases because obviously on a daily basis there are more and more cases uh, joining the, the list and therefore, we need to understand: Have they just ring fenced the three hundred thousand, and it's, is there just another uh, backlog keeping up somewhere else? Something else, Joe, that's important about the section uh, of the Forensic Procedure uh, Act that's been that's been implemented is that that might also cause a further bottleneck regarding the DNA backlog. So remember that we already have a lot of pressure on our forensic labs, COVID, the unions, specifically pop crew that said that you can't have too many people in the lab, which debated, it might be debate for another day, right or wrong. The point is just that crime doesn't stop because of COVID. So we need to make sure that there's something in place. They're also busy building a new forensic lab in Port Elizabeth or Kuberga. And uh, that, I'm not sure what the status of that construction is. So that might also release some of the pressure. The problem that we also have regarding this is in October of 2021, they should have had public-private participate, public-private partnerships running already. And that doesn't seem to have happened yet. We haven't had any news of real partnerships taking place and uh, the private sector jumping in to assist. So that's also very worrying. It just goes to show that Becky Tele and co, and specifically the ANC, does not take this seriously. I honestly think, and very blunt statement, but I honestly think they don't want law enforcement to function properly because then they'll be caught out with all the wrongdoing that they're busy with. But uh, but yeah, that's a discussion for another day. Yeah, no, it definitely is a discussion for another day. Ian, um, yeah, before you go, right before you go, I just want to mention to the viewers that I will have Ian Cameron as a guest. We'll be talking about all of this that we just spoke about and more depending on what has transpired in the, in the months to come because I'm only going to have Ian on the 7th of March on this show. Uh, link is in the description. Set a reminder. We'll be, like I said, we'll be talking about all this stuff and a lot more. So, Ian, uh, thank you so much. And thank you to uh, Action Society for all the work that you guys are doing. Guys, there is a link to Action Society as well in the description. Please support them. Check them out. They do amazing work. Ian, thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much, Joe. Have a great day. You too. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think? Do you think this act is going to make a difference? Do you think SAPS will be capable of implementing this act? Let me know your thoughts in the, in the comments section below. Don't forget to also subscribe to this channel if you enjoy this content. There's a lot more content coming your way. Don't forget to also share this video. It really helps the channel grow. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, stay safe, be kind to another, and I'll see you at the next one. Cheers.